This is an experiment with some of the procedural shading textures that Maya provides. I'm going to start with creating a sphere and I'll center it and I'll make it pretty smooth. Probably good. All right. Now I'm going to use the node editor <clears throat> and I'm going to hit tab, ask for a Lambert. Here we go. So it's a lot like the hypershade. You can drag that over there. So now we have Lambert 2 on this sphere. Now, typically the next thing that somebody might do, adding procedural 3D texture, would be to go like this and choose one, maybe the crater. So let's see what we get. So we get this crater, and we get this Place 3D Texture node, and if we look and see what it's doing on the sphere, it looks like that. Now what these things are kind of doing and certainly what they should be doing is taking a point as input using a mathematical function to turn that point into a color and then putting that color where that point is in space and if they were to do that then there's a lot of useful things that we could do uh, to take advantage of that workflow so in the case of this crater for example um, it shouldn't really need this 3D placement texture. It should just, I suppose, default to the identity matrix, and that's maybe what it does. So let's let's get rid of that for a second and look and see what kinds of inputs we have available to this to this uh, noise function. So I'm going to hit four in the node editor and frame it. Now, if we look at the inputs we see that there are all kinds of things coming in, coming in, coming in. And then there are these things, normal, camera, point camera, point object, reference point camera, reference point object. Now these are the things that to me are interesting because these are opportunities to put a point into the function and get a color out. So let's, let's see what happens if we do that. So I'm going to say um, tab, ramp, texture don't really need this I just wanted to use it as a number and the number I'm going to use is zero 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 just like that so four and out color now let's start connecting let's start connecting out color to the various inputs on this shader and see what happens so Let's see, out color to um, point camera. So that's point in camera space, presumably. So I didn't see anything happen. I'm going to shade it. I don't see anything happening. Um, I'm going to move this to point in object space. Uh, I still don't see anything happening. Now I'm going to move it to point reference point in object space and I still don't see anything happening and I save the best for last uh, I'm gonna move it to reference point in camera space and now in spite of the fact that I didn't see anything happen here I think it's slow to update but if we render you can see that it's completely red So if we look at this ramp, we can see that right now there's a single color coming out of the ramp and it's zero, it's black. And so what's happening is this sphere thinks that every single point on its surface is at one location and that one location is the origin. And the color that that one location gets is this kind of orangey color and that's what it's getting. So if we let it 
think it's at different points you can see that um, it's changing its color across the entire surface of the sphere and that's because every point on the sphere thinks that it's somewhere else now as I move it you know through the through through color space it's moving through physical space so if we go back to this ramp and we add a a uh, see how proficient I am with this um, we add a, a, a white color now there's a, a, a blend of values in wa in the y direction and so we can see if we shade this sphere that we get this look now notice there's a little bit of a difference between what it's shading like and what it appears to be like here now the other kind of weird thing is that because the only input that I can seem to find that works is the um, this point in camera space what it means is that notice this thick red band here what it means is that tiny little changes in the camera point of view like this watch mm, hardly moved it at all render again now it's way down there move it again it's completely different again so it's extremely sensitive to where the camera is as well as where the objects are because we're using um, our points in camera space now there are ways that you can get around that involving using matrix multiplies and getting things into certain coordinate systems and out of other coordinate systems but for the time being just for convenience I'm gonna leave it exactly the way it is so now if we now go to let's get rid of this ramp we don't need it and let's say we're gonna use a sampler info node there it is and this produces a point in well there are all these choices point in camera space point in object space point in world space let's just keep it simple and say point in world space and I'm going to connect that to the only input that I can get to work which is this reference point in camera space so if we do that then you can see we get if I'm doing this correctly we get we get this I'm a little surprised at I mean it's basically correct but hopefully let's see that there's a sort of like cross shaped X shaped thing here so I'm gonna try moving it just slightly yeah so that's okay so that's basically working um, let me just throw this in here and then I'll do a tiny little change again and so it's quite different that's what I want that's what I expect because it's 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 getting points but they're in camera space so now what we could do is let's say we want to um, see here's a top view let's say we want to put it on a tabletop so here's a plane and I'm gonna move it down so that it's move it down like that so that it's not even so that it's just under I'll, I'll intersect it a little bit it's not that really important um, but what I want to do is freeze transformations just to keep the whole conversation simple so that everything thinks that it's at sort of the identity matrix as far as its transformation so that it's unmoved so if we say now um, assign existing material Lambert 2 there's that so if we shade this we should get that and if we take these points and let's say we want to make everything seem like it's bigger or smaller um, multiply divide and the we're going to multiply everything by uh, one five 
1. So let's see, here's our multiply divide. And we could take, let's see, the output of this is going to go into reference point camera, replacing that other thing. And input 2 is our number, which we're not going to change. And input 1 is our point in world space, which is going to go in there. So hopefully everything is now, see it thinks that it's, the points now think that they are five times taller, which means that they're going to see five times as much texture. But they're not really five times taller, so the actual effect that happens is the texture gets squeezed to one-fifth of its height and put on the object. So you can see that, you can see the effect that that has on the sphere. So another thing that we could do for example, and this is kind of cool because now we have control over, you know, much more control over what these textures do, and we're not waiting for it to provide us with an implode slider or a scale or this or that, whatever it is. If we want to do something, we're now in control of what it is that it's going to do. Let's say that we take this, uh, break these connections, break that, and let's move this to a divide instead of a multiply and let's take the point and divide it by its own distance so we take the point and put it there then we say distance distance between there it is okay now that gives us the distance between two points. So we want the distance between between the point in world space and the origin. We're going to leave that alone. Um, so that's, and then we're going to take, so that's the distance that's, and we're going to take this point and divide it by its own distance which means here's the distance and it's because the distance is a single value it's going to have to go to input x and input y and input z and now the output is going to go into reference point camera like that okay there we go so now what I've done is I've made every single point in the world think that it's a point on the unit sphere so that has the effect of making the entire thing into a, a spherical projector so you can see that if I were to take another plane and duplicate it Move it out here like this. Move it up like that. You can see the way these textures are, are lining up with each other. Because it's... Uh, so like this is smearing out that way and these are connecting and that's all going like that. So. Um, I'm a little surprised that's working so well. I thought I was going to have to freeze those transformations. Modify, freeze transformations. I'll do it anyway. I think for the render it's probably necessary. So there there you go. There's a, um, a spherical projector. Now, so that's not something that you can do with the crater node. Notice that there's no UVs involved or anything like that. And um, um, so... It would be nice if more of these inputs worked, and I'm not sure why these things work the way that they do, because if you, um, it really should all be based on the ability to take a point, do something to it, before passing it to these other functions. Because you know we should be able to evaluate what a field is at any point in space, and then use it as a color on a surface. Now, if that's possible within the node editor, I'm not aware of it. It would be nice to be able to do that sort of thing. Or it would be nice to be able to take the position of a particle 
evaluate it in three-dimensional space, pass it to this function, and use it to control the opacity of the particle so that you have these sort of spherical shafts of light projecting from this ball that affect the color of particles or affect the opacity of the particles, things like that. So let's see. Um, I'll try one last thing. Um, so let's see. Tab. Um, volume noise. Volume noise. There we go. Okay, so now I'll leave the place 3D thing on it just so that I can conveniently scale it. And let's see, I have these points that are getting passed to here, but what I want to do is tab add. Looking for the add subtract. Not sure where it is. Uh, I'll go the other way. Create node. Utilities. And. There it is, plus minus average. Okay. So take this, make sure it's set to sum, which it is. And let's see, this is going to go to the output in 3D. It's going to go to reference point camera. And the output of the multiply divide node is going to go to input 3D. And volume noise is going to go to Out color is going to go to input 3D, the next one, and those should sum. So hopefully, yeah, there we go. So now what I've gotten is it's doing the projection, but it's also, the points are also getting rippled. So if I go back to here and Scale that up. That's what I was looking for, that manipulator. So there you go. So it's um it's rippled noise being added, but it's still spherically projecting. So that's the kind of thing where I, for the most part, my uh, unless I'm not using it right after all these years, um seems to keep away from the user is the ability to do this sort of stuff. So I wish that it functioned more like um, maybe how I imagine Houdini works, although I'm not a Houdini user. Um, I guess that's it. Thank you.